हरे कृष्णा हाँ दंडा देवी हरी बोल हरे कृष्ण बिगिन क्लास वंदे हम श्री गुरु श्री तपद कमल श्री गुरु वैष्णवांश श्री रूप सागर जात सगण रघुनाथ सजीव साइत साबूत भजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पाद सलिता श्री विशाखा ओम ज्ञान तिपिरांधस्य ज्ञानांजन सलाकाय चक्षुंदिक तस्म श्री गुरव नम नाम श्रेष्ठ मनमी शचिपुत्र स्वूप तस्ग्रज मृपी माथुरी गोष्ठवाटी राधा कुंडम गिरीवरो माधवा माधवाशा प्राप्त ये प्रथित कृपया श्री गुरु नमस्ते नमस्ते गुरुदेवाय सब सिद्धि नारायण गुस्वाई महाराज then also offer our best and sister lotus feet of the rendi sanyasi shishima bhakti dant dandi maharaj namnishta sant shri anirudh das prabhu ji all the vaishnavas and vaishnavas are gathered here to accept my humble obeisance so we are discussing japa dharma i apologize yesterday i couldn't uh, do the madhurik adhimani class because uh, i took my computer <coughs> repair um, so so yesterday i was in transit uh, i had to go to bangalore with the computer and come back with the computer <laughs> so yes, um, uh, so um, i was bus all the time i reached home. when i reached almost was 10 o'clock by the time i reached so uh, even if i would, i could not come at 9 to 10 class because it was so late so but today i will discuss this um, jeva dharma now brajanath is asking Uh, this question: uh, Are literature such as the Gita and the Bhagavatam not counted as praman? Praman. Huh? So what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said: Aradyo Bhagavan Brajeshatamyas Tadham Abrinda Vanam Ramya Kajdu Pada Varjodu Varge Naya Karpita Shivar Bhagavatam Pramana Malam Prema Pumartho Mahan Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Matamidam Tadkadaro Na Parat Brajandan Shri Krishna is the supreme worshipful deity. Shri Vrindavan Dham is as worship, worshipful as Krishna because it is the place of his pastimes. Among all forms of worship, the Gopi's worship of Krishna is supreme. Shri Vrindavan Bhagavatam offers the supreme flawless evidence of this truth. Huh? Uh, this is the teaching of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Shri Vrindavan Bhagavatam is the flawless evidence of this truth. Huh? So Shastras, there are also examples. Uh, so actually, one time, Shri Vrindavan Param Guru Dev, Shri Vrindavan Bhakti Pragyan Kishore Goswami Maharaj, he once. Um, um went to one high court uh, high court um um once she vinod bihari brahmachari attended a religious assembly in krishnanagar at which attorneys barristers and retired judges and other eminent learned and respected people were present uh, in krishnanagar many of them gave sincere and thoughtful speeches and one in particular spoke with great humility and regret how uselessly wasted my whole life in court proceedings He began. My birth has gone in vain because I have not performed Hari Bhajan, the thought, the worship of Lord Hari. A human life can become successful only through Hari Bhakti, but I have distanced myself from it. Now, in old age, um, my senses are becoming weak, and there is no certainty when death will come. I don't understand uh, what to do now. Speaking in this way, he prayed at the lotus feet of the Vaishnavas and Bhagwan for Bhagavad Bhakti. At the end of the meeting, the respected chairman asked Shri Vinod Bihari Brahmachari Kritiratta Prabhu if he could please say something. He stood up and began to speak simply and naturally, but with very powerful language. The hidden purport of all the scriptures is devotion to the Supreme Lord. Uh, of all forms of Bhagavad Bhakti, the bhakti that is imbued with prema, prema mai bhakti, as seen in the associates of Brajanandan Shri Krishna in Vraja is topmost. Therefore, Vaishnava Acharya. श्री चक्रवर्ती ठाकुर 
रम्या काचित उपासना व्रजवधु वर्गेन या कल्पिता श्रीमद भागवतम ब्रह्मण अमलम ब्रह्म कुमर तो महान श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभो मत विदम कत्रा दरोना पर व्रजानंदन श्री कृष्ण इज द सुप्रीम वर्षिफुल डी श्री व्रजानंद व्रज व्रज वृंदावन धाम इज एज वर्षिफुल एस कृष्ण बिकॉज इट इज द प्लेस ऑफ हिज पास्ट टाइम्स अमंग ऑल फॉर्म्स ऑफ वर्शिप गोपीज वर्शिप ऑफ कृष्ण इज सुप्रीम श्रीमद भागवतम ऑफर्स द सुप्रीम फ्लॉलेस एविडेंस ऑफ दिस ट्रूथ This is the teaching of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In the shastras, there are also examples of court proceedings. I think that the performance of court proceedings is the best sadh in Hari Bhakti. Besides, court proceedings are actually Hari Bhakti. It is just that people do not understand how to perform them. For them, for those unfortunate souls, the opportunity to attend Bhagavad Bhakti is very remote. We are in the party of the most worshipful Shri Mati Radhika, and our special service is to arrange for our meetings with Krishna. On one occasion, Sri Krishna went to meet with Chandravali in her kunja. Radha Sakhi has made up some excuse to extricate himself from there, and they brought him to Sri Radha's kunja at Sri Radha Kund. There, in front of Kunja Shri Shri Mati Radha, he was made to write, "I am a servant of Radha Ji. I will never leave Radha Ji and go elsewhere." Then he had to sign this declaration. A few days later, though, Sri Krishna, compelled by his nature, Neglected his plea and again went to Chandravali's kunja. Radha Sakhi's, seeing that Sri Krishna was so opposed to Sri Vrindavaneshwari, Radha Ka filed a court filed a court case against him. Krishna was not present at the proceedings. Radha Ji Sakhi is winning the case. Issued a court decree with which he was bound to comply. By means of a warrant, they arranged a sweet meeting with Sri Mati Radha Ka. The lawyer, the judge, and all the people were taken aback with Sri Krishna, Sri Krishna Prabhu's speech, which was filled with scriptural conclusions. His philosophical lecture left a deep impression in everyone's heart and made them realize that the most important achievement in the human form of life is to attain the service of Sri Radha Govinda and nothing else. He then explained that a higher birth, beauty, education, wealth, etc., are not required for Sri Krishna Bhajan. On the contrary, Krishna Bhajan is the right of every human being. Thus, it is essential for all of us to perform Hari Bhajan. Mm. So you see that he is giving evidence from scriptures. Huh? So the Bhagavad Gita is uh, called an Upanishad, Gita Upanishad, because it is the Vani or instruction of the Bhagwan. Hence, the Gita is Veda. Uh, so Gita is uh, Vani of Bhagwan. Huh? There is something called Vani and Vapu. Huh? So we have to follow the Vani. Um, 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 So one should aspire to uh, uh, one should worship the spiritual master first in his form as a sadhaka hmm? and render intimate service, vishramba guru seva unto him. Consider the guru to be your ever well wisher. There should be uh, internal and deep love for the spiritual master. One should aspire to inherit and receive the love for Krishna that is present in his heart. So that is what it is. Upanishad means you have to go near the spiritual master and hear the Hari Katha from him. So you have to first you have to do intimate service to the Guru there. Huh? So uh, then you have to hear his Vani. What Vani will speak? He will speak Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavat. Huh? So that is the Vani of Bhagwan and also the Vani of Guru there. Hmm. So again, similarly, Dashamula Tattva is also Bhagavat Vani because it is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instructions. So it is also Veda. Huh? So Dashamula Tattva we already told. That one praman and nine prameyas. Uh, this is actually the dasamul tatwa, and uh, this is also spoken by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So dasamul tatwa is actually um, uh, best, I think. So it was Shri Bhakti Nath Thakur, Bhakti Nath Thakur, the seventh Goswami, who initiated the flow of bhakti when it had dwindled, almost disappeared. He preached in the modern world the essential aspect of Western philosophy. He preached Bhagavad Tattva, Shakti Tattva, Bhakti Tattva, Maya Tattva, and Achinta Vedavet Tattva. Shri Lagurde offered, offered, declared that Shri Lagurde not Thakur Dashamul Tattva is the singular essence of all the literatures of the Gaudiya Sampradaya, including those of the Sikh Goswamis. Shri Lagurde means Shri Param Gurude. Shri Lagurde accepted Shri Mad Bhagavatam as the immaculate scriptural evidence and the natural commentary on the Vedanta. Furthermore, he said that the Nama Prema Dharma. The religion of chanting the holy name in pure love, practiced and propagated by Shivan Mahaprabhu, is the actual subject matter of Vedanta. In order to establish these three points, he expressed the desire to publish a commentary expounding the glories of Shri Aryanam based on the doctrine of Shabdavad from Vedanta Sutra. Hmm. 
actually um param guru they had this desire so dashamul tatva is saying that um, is um, everything mm -hmm. Uh, Dashamul Tattva is very, very important. Uh, it is, uh, we should never um, um, minimize the position of Dashamul Tattva. Uh, Dashamul Tattva is uh, um, the most important uh, scriptural uh, achievement. Uh, so actually it is Gaura Sundar who taught about us to the holy name. Uh, uh, Krishna Drishti Patahe to Shabda Kartha Yojanam Sotava the Shanka Laika Bitti Krishna Vikshanam Sula Sukshma Mula Laksha Krishna Saukya Sambaram Prema Dhamma Deva Meva Nomi Gaura Sundaram Prema Dhamma Deva Meva Nomi Gaura Sundaram She Gaura Sundar proved that the Supreme Lord's sweet will and well wishing glance is the background cause governing each sound's concomitant meaning. So like we say, water, uh, then water means we immediately remember the water. Mm. So the sound is empowered by Bhagavan. The Lord's sanction in the element, deciding the orderly arrangement and harmony shared between sound and its meaning, not the mundane endeavors of the prominent grammarians headed by the sages like Panini, who try to affix sounds with word meanings. This is because the purpose of everything, animate or inanimate, is existence is ultimately to please the Supreme Lord by enhancing his charming pastimes. I fall down at the feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the golden volcano of divine law. Huh? Sport, so actually, when we say wa, we cannot understand anything. When we say ta, something can be known. Ra, we say we, full meaning will come. But the word and its meaning, they are connected by Krishna's sweet will. Huh? That is for pleasure of Krishna, the words have their meaning. Otherwise, the words would be meaningless. Huh? So Mahaprabhu, he taught us about the Shabda Brahma, the holy name of Krishna. So Mahaprabhu's instructions are also Veda. Srimad Bhagavatam is the crest jewel of the Pramanas because it is the compilation of the essence of the things of the Vedas. The instructions of different Shastras are authoritative evidence, only as long as they follow the Vedic knowledge. There are three types of Tantra Shastras, Sattvic, Rajasik and Tamasik. Of this, the Pancharatra and so on are in the Sattvic group. And they are accepted as evidence because they expand the confidential meaning of the Vedas. So, like we see Narada Pancharatra. So, Pancharatra actually means knowledge. Pancharatra means knowledge. Like we tell, you know, oh, um, oh, we take Bhagavad Diksha or Pancharatrika Diksha. Pancharatrika Diksha. And uh, so, this many, many times um, this word Pancharatra comes. So, Pancha means. Uh, five and Ratra means knowledge, the five branches of knowledge uh, that is called Pancharatra. Uh. So, she, there is one book called she, Narada Pancharatra. Um, Narada Pancharatra says, Yat tatastham tu chid rupam swa samedyam vinigratam, vinigratam, being a particle of consciousness and an emanation from the chit shakti, the living being is marginal or thirst. So, such high class knowledge is present in the Pancharatra. This is the knowledge in the mode of goodness. Uh. You should understand Narada Pancharatra. Mm. Narada Pancharatra is um, quoted in uh, Bhakti Rasamra the Sindhu also. Huh? Bhakti's definition is given in Narada Pancharatra. Mm. What is the Narada Pancharatra says about that? Uh, Bhakti Sarva Padhi Vidir Muktam Tat Paraktvena Nirvalam Rishike and Rishikesh Sevanam Bhakti Ruchati. Bhakti is service rendered to the transcendental senses to, uh, uh, by the transcendental senses to Sri Krishna, Lord of the transcendental senses. Such bhakti in which all endeavors are undertaken for the pleasure of Krishna is free from obstructions arising from the nature of the body and mind. It is also pure. It is not covered by the creepers of the karma, reward-seeking activity or jnana, knowledge in pursuit of impersonal liberation. So Pancharatra means knowledge. So you can see Narada Pancharatra such nice definitions of bhakti are given. There is another Pancharatra called Hayashirsha Pancharatra. Hmm. Hayashirsha Pancharatra says, um, uh, that uh, it is not proper to apply logic and argument to that existence, the spiritual existence, which is the chintya or inconceivable. Yaya shute jalpati nirvishesham sasa sa vidatte sa visheshame va vichar yoga satihan tatasam prayo valiyan sa visheshaniyam. Whenever the shutis have initially described the tattva vasu as devoid of attributes, nirvishesha. They have in the end established Savishesh Tattva, truth which with attributes. 
not the nirvishesh tattva nirvishesh and savishesh are both eternal qualities of bhagwan nevertheless after seriously elabor elabor deliberating on the matter it is the savishesh tattva which turns out to be prominent because in this world there is experience of only the savishesh tattva there is no experience of the nirvishesh tattva hmm. the purport is that the paratattva has been called achintya arup and nirakara and so on because he is he is being beyond maya actually bhagwan has a transcendental aprakrut form he is the foundation of all transcendental qualities and is possessed of all transcendental features and attributes there is not even the slightest hint of prakriti material nature or maya in his sachidananda form words such as nirakara have been stated in particular parts of the scriptures only to make us understand this fact hmm. so when we say bhagwan is nirakara actually it doesn't mean bhagwan doesn't have any shape but actually bhagwan is having transcendental shape and form hmm. so this is the narad panjaratra and other panjaratras they tell us huh? these are the sattvic group and uh, they are accepted as evidence because they expand the confidential meanings of the vedas many in the big line each of these uh, in the course of um, time and unscrupulous and untruthful personalities have interpolated many chapters mandala sections and divisions and mantras into the vedas in order to fulfill uh, various self interest those parts that were added at a later time are called prakshita or interpolated parts it is not that we should accept any and every vedic text as reliable evidence those vedic granthas sacred books that the acharyas in the such sampradayas have accepted as evidence are definitely veda and are authoritative evidence but we should reject literature or parts of literature that they have not recognized so actually we have to be careful not that we read every single scripture uh, uh, we should only um, read the scriptures which have been uh, accepted by the uh, acharyas huh? otherwise we should not accept them uh, as bona fide huh? so um, which vedic granthas have the acharyas of the sat sampradaya accepted so this is the question of brajanat then he says isha upanishad kena upanishad katha upanishad prashna upanishad uh, munda upanishad mandukya upanishad uh, taitri upanishad aitri upanishad chandokya upanishad bhadaranya upanishad shweta shweta upanishad these uh, 11 satvik upanishads are accepted and so are gopal upanishad rasinga tapni and other tapnis that are helpful in worship uh, so these are all uh, upanishads are accepted as uh, bona fide uh, they were acharyas like isha upanishad uh, Isha Upanishad is a very nice Upanishad. Isha Vasya Vidam Sarvam Yakincham Jagatam Jagat Tena Takte Na Bunjita Maadurda Kasse Siddhanam. Uh, when we joined this one first Upanishad, we studied Sami Bhakti Dan Sami Maharaj. Um, in Jaya Dharma, in chapter fourteen also, the Isha Upanishad is quoted. Tad Ejeti Tad Nijay Nijeti Tad Dure Tad Vanti Ke Antar Asya Sarvasya Tad. Uh, भगवान Gopal Upanishad, Narsingh Tapni Upanishad. Huh? These are all like Gopal Tapni, Narsingh Tapni. These are all good Upanishads. And Gopal Tapni is a very nice, very sweet. Um, like there's a verse which is quoted by Param Guru there. Uh, um, so Paramananda Prabhu. Um, actually, this is a very wonderful incidence. Huh? Every year on the occasion of Sri Gaur Jamal's Janma Sabha session of Sri Dham Pracharini Sabha was held at Sri Maya Puri Yoga Pit. During this meeting, Sri Prabhupada would request the Mata residents to pray and glorify each other. In 1929, Prabhupada ordered Sri Vinod Bihari Brahmachari to glorify Sri Parvananda Brahmachari with Ratna. Sri Parvananda Brahmachari, an intimate and one-pointed servant of Sri Prabhupada, was a close friend of Sri Vinod Bihari. They lived together, eating, drinking, sleeping, and performing seva for Sri Prabhupada. Vinod Bihari stood up and first offered praise to his guru. So you see that um, we actually lack in this department. We don't um, 
glorify each other enough. But we try to find faults. Uh, now, Vinod Bihar is going to glorify Parmananda Prabhu, his God brother. But first, he is going to um, glorify his spiritual master. Uh, and he is telling that Mukam Karoti Vachalam Pangum Langhete Grim. So now you see that in this verse also, the verse Parmananda comes. I worship Madhava, the embodiment of Supreme Bliss Parmananda, whose mercy turns the dumb into eloquent speakers and enables the name to cross mountains. Mukam Karoti Vacharam. Mukam, not Mukam, Mukam. Mukam means one who cannot speak. Mukam Karoti Vacharam. Pangum Langhete Grim. Yat Krupata Mahambande. Yat Krupata Mahambande Parmananda. Vinod Bihari then began uh, uh, to describe uh, uh, all the good qualities of Parmananda. Guru Sevakshi Parmananda Prabhu is the idea for Guru Sevaka. He is always with the Prabhupada like a shadow. Performing tasks such as cooking, washing his clothes, managing travel arrangements, and massaging Prabhupada's feet at bed night. Sometimes Parmananda Prabhu returns to the mud late when Shila Prabhupada is taking rest. But even if it is midnight, he would go on the door and call Prabhupada. Uh, Prabhupada and Prabhupada, uh, for Prabhupada to open the door. At that time, Srila Prabhupada himself will open the door of his bhajan kuti for him. Parmananda Prabhu is exceptionally expert in constructing temples and matas, in operating the printing press, and in all aspects of running a matha. He cannot stay alive without serving Prabhupada. It is not possible to perform service to Shishi Guru Gauranga without the mercy of Shri Parmananda Prabhu. Who had such exclusive Guru Nishta, all Guru Shishi Parmananda Prabhu. Then he quoted a verse from Gopal Tapni Upanishad. Huh? Uh, Prasida Parama Ananda, Prasida Parameshwara, Adi Vyadi Bhujangena, Drishtamam Uddhara Prabhu. Have mercy upon me, Parmananda. Have mercy upon me, O Parameshwara. I am bitten by the serpent of material miseries. Prabhu, please deliver me. So, in Vedanta, the concept of cultivating a Parmananda or Supreme Bliss is also mentioned. Uh, Ananda Maya Abhyasa, Brahma Sutra 1.1.12. The deep meaning of practicing Parmananda is to engage completely and constantly in the pursuit of the personification of Parmananda, Brajananda, Sri Krishna, with one's body, mind, and words. Sri Rupa Swami established the mission to fulfill Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's innermost desire and instructed us to cultivate this Parmananda. Anukullena Krishna Shilam Bhakti Uttama. Uttama Bhakti is the unfavorable, uninterrupted cultivation of service for Krishna's pleasure with body, mind, and words. Unless we cultivate Parmananda favorably, that is, unless we practice the process of Uttama Bhakti, we will not obtain Parmananda. Therefore, in the conclusion of the Brahma Sutra, it is said, Anavritti Shabdat, Anavritti Shabdat. Therefore, the Shabda refers to Shabda Brahma. Transcendental sound vibration, the name of Sri Krishna, the personification of Parmananda is that very transcendental Shabda Brahma. Nama Chinta Mani Krishna Chaitanya Rasabhigraha Purna Shuddha Nitya Mukta Vipatva Nami Naminu. This means the transcendental blissful name of Krishna is a wish fulfilling gem which visits all spiritual desires because the name of Krishna and Krishna himself are not different. It is the personification of transcendental rasa. It is complete, it is beyond Maya and it is eternal. So like this, he was quoting uh, Srila Paramguru, they quoted from uh, different different Upanishads, uh, which are very authentic. He also quoted from Taitri Upanishad. Raso Vaisa, Raso Yom Labdhayam, Bhavati Koyam, Koyam Pranyat, Yadaksha, Yadakasha, Ananda, Sat, Ye, Eva, Ananda, the supremely blissful Parmananda, Supreme Absolute Truth is the personification of Rasa, Transcendent Venus. The living entity experiences Parmananda by obtaining the personification of Rasa. If this absolute truth, the personification of supreme bliss, did not exist, then who would remain alive? You would endeavor to who would endeavor to protect his life? Hence, the Brahma, the personification of Parmananda filled with Rasa, gives Ananda to everyone. So, um, like this, he quoted from so many scriptures glorifying Parmananda Prabhu. He quoted especially from these Upanishads, which are considered authentic. Oh. Vrajanadi is asking a question. Uh, is there any evidence in the Vedas to show that logic cannot enter into the transcendental subject matter? There are many famous statements in the Vedas, such as Naisha Tarkena Apaniya on the Chikita. 
whatever intelligence you have grant you have gained regarding atma tattva should not be destroyed by logic tarka tattva position and the statements from vedas for the suggest tarka apratishthana arguments based on logic have no foundation and cannot be used to establish any conclusion about a conscious reality because a fact that someone established by logic by someone establishes by logic argument today can be refuted tomorrow by someone who is more intelligent and qualified therefore the process of argumentation is said to be unfounded and baseless brahma sutra 2.1.11 furthermore it is stated achinta kliye bhava na tam sarkena vyojaye prakriti bhya param yach tat achinta selakshan mahabharat desho par all transcendental tattvas are beyond material nature and are therefore inconceivable their arguments are within the jurisdiction of material nature so they can only be applied in mundane subject matters so actually this dry arguments uh, like we see in any court room or anything or where they are trying to figure out someone committed a crime or not these are dry arguments uh, so here um, so actually um, <clears throat> we should not engage in uh, discussing dry arguments uh, uh, this is the most important thing tadapi sunichena tadapi sanshna amanina mandena ketaniya sada but thinking oneself to be even more insignificant than straw on the street being more tolerant than a tree and not accepting honor but giving honor to everyone a living entity becomes eligible to chant the holy name the primary meaning of this verse is that one is to chant the holy name with a pure attitude one who considers himself more lowly and fallen than anyone else never criticizes the centric persons or disregards demigods like lord shiva considering them to be independent of lord vishnu he never disregards guru blasphemes the bona fide scriptures or doubts the glory of hari naam he never combines false speculation with dry arguments in order to equate nirguna brahma with the name of hari ha ah. so this speculation is not required he never combines false speculation uh, with dry arguments in order to equate nirguna brahma with the name of hari nor does he commit offenses on the strength of the holy name so we should not engage in the dry arguments so oh, what is uh, bhagwan is impersonal bhagwan has no form uh, uh, so this is not um, uh, required dry arguments uh, not required um, so we should be very very careful um, dry arguments have no um not not important but we should try to um, understand the truths um by uh, hearing from the spiritual master so all transcendental tattva are beyond material nature and are therefore inconceivable dry arguments are within the jurisdiction of material nature so they can only be applied in mundane subject matters they cannot even come close to transcendental tattvas what to speak of grasping them as far as inconceivable conceptions are concerned the applications of dry arguments is undesirable and useless this shloka of the mahabharata establishes the limits of logic and shri rupa goswami the acharya of bhakti marga has therefore um, written in bhakti samrudh sindhu eastern division 1.1.32 sulpapi ruchir eva syad bhaktatva bodhika yukti tat kevala naiva yat asya apratishtata one can comprehend bhakti tattva when one has gained even a little taste for shastras that establish bhakti tattva such as shrimad bhagavatam however one cannot um, understand the bhakti tattva by dry logic alone because logic has no basis and there is no end to arguments so um, this is the important thing ruchi if you have taste you can understand but logic you cannot understand if you have little taste even if you have understood one verse of shrimad bhagavatam it's okay Uh, but don't um, uh, don't uh, argue actually uh, where, where is bhagwan uh, show me bhagwan and you know bhagwan has a form on this and that you know um, can you show me bhagwan i want to see bhagwan by my eyes then only i'll accept um, bhagwan no that type of logical arguments um, not very beneficial um, uh, so sarvapi ruchir eva syat bhaktir tattva bodhika yuktishta kevala naiva yad asya apradishta hmm so that, this is a very very important verse huh? salpapi ruchir evasya at bhakti tatva bodhika yutu kevala niva um yasya api yadasya apradeshita 
Even a little of real taste in bhakti is a passport to the understanding of the true nature of bhakti. When mere arguments has no found no sound foundation, it does not conduce to the comprehension of the true nature of bhakti. So Srila Jiva Goswami is telling that some explains that she has the sense of excellence in the words of Agatha and other bhakti states due to the residual, uh, residual traces of previous experience. It is only Shraddha or faith which prepares the way to the comprehension of the true nature and ultimate realization of bhakti. Me argument without the authoritative scriptures is unavailing. Any argument, however profound, is liable to the is liable to worth a profounder uh, argument of a keener intelligence. So you may pose an argument, but someone who has more keen intelligence than you, more intelligent than you, then that person may throw your argument away. Therefore, the way of mere reasoning can never be decisive in its results. It cannot be discounted altogether. Such arguments are helpful that expound authoritative sacred scriptures. According to Sri Mukunda Das, he is a commentator on Bhakti Rasan Bhakti Sindhu. Even a slight ruchi or taste in the Prince of Bhakti, <coughs> even a slight ruchi or taste in the Prince of Bhakti, Purifies the mind and thereby prepares it for a deeper insight in the riches of bhakti as a spiritual experience. Mm. So, this is what is told. Mm. Mm. Tatra prachile rapyuktam. Mm. Even conclusions established by experts of the theory of inference are found to be by other inferences propounded by logic. Now, uh, Sri Suresh Acharya, the reputed Vartikata, the initiator of Sanskrit Vedanta, has said in commenting on Brahma Tarka Pratishthana, an aphorism of Vedanta, that even the most carefully formatted inferences of expert logicians are liable to be overthrown by inferences of greater subtlety formulated by logicians of superior intellect. All of that shows that logic without a solid Foundation of Shastra embodying the intuitive deliverance of sages leads nowhere. This is the this is a section called generic character of Bhakti. <clears throat> Nothing genuine can be attempted by logic argument, as this ancient statement proves. Yatne no padi to apiartha, ushare anuvar anumatra in abhi yukta tarayir anneer ane khavo ko padhete. Any logician can clearly establish any subject matter using an argument. But someone who is expert in argument can easily fit him. You, you, you use logic to establish one Siddhanta today, but a more intelligent and qualified logician will be able to refute it tomorrow. So why should you not why should you rely on logic? So Brajana is telling Babaji, I fully understood Veda. The Veda, which is to say knowledge that is Satas Siddha, self-evident. Is prominent. Some logicians argue against the way for the fruitless. Now, please be merciful and explain the second shloka of the Shumuni. Haristu ekam tattvam vidi shiva sure shakrana hita vedam brahmatra kurkira hitam tattu anu maha atva dasyam sho jagadanugata savi radha kanto navadevata impishi dudaya. This is the Second. In Shri Hari to whom Brahma, Shiva, Indra and other devatas continuously offer pranama is the only supreme absolute truth. So um, you see that Hari Kadachit Kalindi Tadina Gangi Tarado Mudaviri Nari Vadana Kama Aswada Madhuba Karma Shambhu Brahma Marapati Ganesha Chitapada Jagannatha Swami Nayana Patari Bhavatuni Jagannatha Swami Nayana Patagani Bhavatuni So Jagannath is worshipped by Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, like this. In this asana also, um, Krishna is called um, is handsome, he is told actually. So Krishna has very handsome back hair. Krishna's name is Keshava. Krishna is also called Keshava because he is the father of Brahma. Shiva and all the demigods. That's why it's called Keshava. 
So you see that Krishna is superior than even Brahma and Shiva, he is the supreme tattva. Hmm. Hmm. And that's why um now also Shri Bhakti Shri Bhakti Vidya Vishnu Path quotes of this. And he said that Dasa Bhut Hare Reva Na Nanya Saiva Kalaj. Padma Puran describes the nature of the Jiva, individual living entity. By nature of the living entity is eternally the servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Hari is never the servant of Brahma, Shiva, or anything else. That we have to be very careful. That we are not servant of Brahma and Shiva, we are servant of Krishna. We are also servant of Shiva and um, Brahma because there is Guru Parampara. But originally we are servant of Krishna, he is the Supreme Lord. No? So, um, <clears throat> so Haritekam Tattvam Vidhi Shiva Suresha Pranamita Yad Evedam Brahma Prakurti Haritam Tadeva Anukha Now, the Dirvishesh Brahma Advar Shakti Shri Hari is bodily effulgence Dirvishesh Brahma So, um, this is actually explained in Bhagavad Gita that um, this Dirvishesh Brahma is bodily effulgence of Krishna huh? This is um, light emanating from his body. Um, we are um, Brahmahi Patishtaham, Amrutasya Avayasya, Sasvatasya, Dharmasya, Sukhaya Kantikasya. Mm. So actually, uh, Brahma Bhagavad Gita class, we will discuss this verse later on. Brahma Nohi Patishtaham, Amrutasya Avayasya, Sasvatasya, Dharmasya, Sukhaya In my formula, Vyakusha Nirguna Savish. I have no material characteristics, but I am full of spiritual attributes and I am in the shelter of Brahma, which is the ultimate goal of the Gyanis. So the Gyanis, they want to merge in that Brahma. So that is what basis of that Brahma is Krishna, Brahma Jyoti, the light coming from Krishna. My Swarup in the form of Nirguna Savisheshatva is the support of immortality and imperishability. Eternality, Prema, love of God, which is the Dharma or the function of the Jivas and further us, the the form of complete happiness. So, Brahma Nahi Pakishtha, Amrutasya Vaya Sacha, Shashwata Sacha Dharmasya, Sukhai Kantikasya. So, Krishna is indeed the shelter of that Nirvishesh Brahma. And then, Mahavishnu, who has created and entered into it as the indwelling super soul of all, is simply his partial expansion. Uh, it is that she Hari alone um, is the way form of transcendental reality, Chit Swarupa. So Mahavishnu is actually entering into the material world. Um, he is um, glancing at the material nature and then from material nature all the living entities are born and the universes are manifest. So by his glance the living entities manifest in the womb of the illusory potency Maya and uh, his semblance um, is the union of the shadow of his uh, uh, union, his, his limb uh, with the Maya will create the universes. Um, so that's why um, Krishna is the source of your Mahavishnu. Vikanda um, Prabhu comes first quadruple expression um, Pratim Nadiruddha Vatadeva Mula Sankarshan. And then more sensation comes Narayan. And Narayan comes for the Nirudya Vasri Mahasankarshan. And from Mahasankarshan comes Mahavishnu. And through the suppose of Mahavishnu, he was um, So, Karnatisha with Mahavishnu is uh, situated in the Viraja, which lies between the spiritual realm and the material world. By his glance toward Maya, the minute conscious jivas are manifest in the forms of atoms situated with the rays of the dance. Because they are in close proximity to Maya, these jivas notice Maya's wonderful nature. All the characteristics of ordinary jivas we have previously mentioned are found in them. Because of their extremely minute by nature and because of their marginal disposition, they sometimes look towards the spiritual sky and sometimes to the material realm. The jivas are extremely weak um, in the marginal condition and because at that time they have not yet attained spiritual strength by the mercy of the objects of their service. Um, so among these uh, unlimited jivas, who, those who are interested in sense verification and want to enjoy Maya become bound by her. Once those who uh, those jivas who ponder over their object of worship attain the strength of Chit Shakti, 
by the mercy of the Sattvastu and go to the transcendental world. Maya Krishna's image, she creates the mundane universe. He then engages the Maya to be purified, the jivas who are averse to bhakti. Maya has two functions, avidya and pradhan. The function of avidya is related to the jiva, and the function of pradhan is related to the inanimate matter. The jiva's desire to perform reward producing activities is born from avidya. The whole inert universe has been arisen from pradhan. Vidya and avidya are two further dimensions of Maya. Which are both related to the jiva. The bondage of the jiva comes from the function of avidya, and his liberation comes from the function of vidya. When an offensive entity becomes inclined towards Krishna, the actions of the vidya function begin in his heart. <clears throat> However, when he becomes averse, the action of the avidya function takes over. So this is actually Param Guru is telling like this. Um, so. Uh, it is that Hari Shri Hari alone, the very form of transcendent reality, Chil Storupa, whose complexion is the color of a freshly formed thunder cloud, who is Shri Radha the beloved of Shri Radha. So Krishna is actually, um, uh, bodily complexion is um, like a fresh rain cloud, thunder cloud, as they said, and a rain cloud. And then he is actually Radha Vallabha. Means beloved of Srimati Radhika. Uh, Sri Radha Vallava, Vrindavan Natavara Bhakati Vinod Ashraya. Radha Vallava. He is Radha Kanda. Uh, mm. yeah, the Upanishads describe Brahma, which is parallel uh, to affiliate matter, uh, to be the supreme truth. So, what argument of or, or evidence has Sri Gaurari used to establish Brahma as here in Bodhi Lepardans? Baba Sri Hari is certainly Bhagavan. Um, whose true nature has been ascertained in the Vishnu Purana. Aishwarya is some of the rest of Virya Srasriya, Jnana Vairabhya Sheva Shandam Bhakti Dina, 6.5.74. Bhagavan is the supreme absolute truth, endowed with six inconceivable potentialities, complete opulence, strength, fame, beauty, knowledge, and renunciation. Aishwarya, Srasriya, Virya Srasriya, Jnana Vaira Gesheva Shannam Bhagav Gitinya. So these are all, uh, this is the definition of um, um, Bhagavad Gita Shabda. I showed this some aggressive videos such as Sriya, Jnana Vaira Gesheva Shannam Bhagav Gitinya. There is a mutual relationship amongst these qualities uh, of body and the end of the end. The question arises. Which of these qualities is Angi and which are Angas? For Angi, the body is that within which the Angas leaves are intact. For example, a tree is Angi and the leaves and branches are the Angas. And the body is Angi and the feet and hands are its Angas. Therefore, the principal quality, Angi Guna represents body and, and to that quality, uh, all the other qualities, Anga Guna, are arranged in its limbs. Another Bhagavan's transcendental form is this. Resplendent beauty, Shri, you know, the Angi Guna. Now, Krishna's beauty is actually mm, very, very um, important. Huh? Actually, in this material world, also you see that the beauty is given topmost importance. Huh? Um, and that is uh, that, uh, that Krishna is actually very beautiful. Shama Sundar, Shikhanda, Shekara, Mera, Hasa, Marli, Manohara, Radhika, Rasika, Maam, Krupa, Esau, Prakacharana, King, Karim. So, mm, Actually, if you want to do Krishna bhajan, you don't have to be beautiful. Uh, you, know, you don't need a higher birth, beauty, education, wealth, etc. required for Sri Krishna bhajan. Because Krishna doesn't need all these things. Because Krishna has the highest, he has the highest beauty, he has the highest education, he has the highest wealth and uh, opulence. So why needs Sadhaka to have all these things? Nothing. Do, to do bhajan, you don't need beautiful. But you can do bhajan of the most beautiful person, Sri Krishna. If your heart is beautiful and you have nishtha or a guru, then you can do this version. On the contrary, Krishna version is the right of every human being. Uh, it is our birth right mm, to do Krishna version. No one can be deprived of that right. There's a tension for all of us to come Hari version. This is the important. Uh, but, um, beauty is not required. So, um, you see that Krishna is beautiful, but now he is not attract everyone. Mm. 
Sorry, dear devotees, I'm not too sure what happened. We'll just wait for Marge to come back. Hare Krishna. Sorry, got disconnected. So, Hare Krishna. Sir. Sorry, I disconnected. Yeah. So, by Shri Purushottam, supreme power, all qualities. Conjoin him, but this doesn't mean he possesses vegetable mundane attributes. As he is the supreme, no defect can ever be attributed to him. Eternally possesses transcendental qualities such knowledge, jnana, energy, strength, color, and change, power, glory, tejas. Some less intelligent people claim that both the uh, virtues and defects of the illusory energy exist in Bhagwan. However, the Supreme Lord can never be subject to my illusion. He is refulgent like the sun, and Maya is like darkness. How can uh, darkness uh, exist? The essential understanding is that the Lord is range of the illusory energy, and therefore He is addressed by the name Parameshwara, the Supreme Controller. Hmm? So, Bhagavan has uh, strength. Aishwarya sa samagrasya, vidyasya shastriya, jnana evaira gate shaiva, sharnam. So this is the um, Bhagavan has six eternal qualities. He possesses all opulences, Aishwarya, strength, virja, yasha, beauty, shri, knowledge, jnana, and renunciation. The various forms of the Lord manifest in the degree to which his specific qualities are exposed, are, uh, are expressed. Um, for example, when his quality of great opulence is prominently manifest, then this form of the Lord of the sky, Shri Narayan. And when his quality of nectarian sweetness predominates, he manifests as Vrindavan Chandra, the moon of Shri Vrindavan, Shri Krishna. Therefore, Shri Krishna alone is the manifestation of Bhagavan. So when the uh, majesty and appearance manifest, that is Narayan. But human like sweetness manifest, then that is Krishna. So Bhagavan has all the strength, all the strength that is told. So um, 
Jaivadharma actually um, very very important book for our uh, spiritual advancement. So the Guru Dev said that if you cannot read any book, then suddenly Jaivadharma and Madhurika Dharma. These books are important books actually. Um, you should try to study this book very carefully. And then uh, Bhagwan has the, the the quality called Yasha. I mean, uh, he is most famous person. In, there is no one actually as famous as Krishna. Uh, this is to be understood. Uh, in Virgin uh, their full wealth, I'm sure your strength, your fame, your beauty, your knowledge, jnana and renunciation, vairagya. Mm. So, God is also like that. Um, uh, all these qualities are found in Narayan and in Kadishas also. Um, like uh, Ashwarya, what is the opulence of Vaman Dev? He appeared very small, but at the time of measuring the earth, he immediately became Mandraputi huge and in three steps covered the entire universe. This is Ashwarya. Ramchandra taking all the monkeys and bears with him and attacks Lanka and cut off Ravana's head. But a uh, new head emerged. Each time he cut off Ravana's head, it would return. Finally, he made a plan where by cutting off Ravana's ten heads, they would not return and Ravana was killed. This is Aishwarya. Uh, Dwarka Dish Krishna possesses so much such appearance and all of the other incarnations possess so much appearance. But Krishna's appearance is especially marvelous. As a small boy, he was at the breast of Putana, drinking and drinking, and no one knew that he was actually doing uh, what he was doing. And he wouldn't leave her breast. So they thought that maybe he was only then he started her life. He was thinking, I don't like anyone to come to Vrindavan and then leave again. She has uh, entered within the boundaries of Raj, therefore I will not allow her ever to leave. So this is Aishwarya and it reaches its zenith in Krishna. There is some renunciation, Vairagya and Rama. He left his kingdom, but he didn't leave Sita. He left uh, together. Um, he, he, he left together with her. Um, Krishna's vairagya is such that hundreds and thousands of gopis were collected together at a very pure place, and a cool breeze was blowing. Both Kishore and Kishoris were there, but at once they disappeared. Krishna had such a strong feeling of vairagya that night that right before his eyes, fifty-six million members of the Yadu dynasty took Ken canes and sticks and fought and killed one another. Even his own son was finished and fell to the ground. Yet Krishna, neither smiling, nor worrying, not saving anyone, just sat quietly with his legs crossed. Why? His vision was that all this fighting and killing was just an Indrajal, a magical illusion. Therefore, the pinnacle of all six opulences is found only in Krishna. Shrimad Bhagavatam 1.3.28 says, Ete Jamshakala Pumsa Krishna Stupto. All of these incarnations are either plenary portions or parts of plenary portions of the Purusha avatars, but Krishna is Bhagavan himself. <clears throat> so, um, this is the thing actually. We should know that um, Krishna is having all the opulences. Huh? So, the Angi Guna of Bhagavan's uh, transcendental form is his resplendent beauty, Shri, and the three qualities opulence, I showed this strength, Vidya, Yesha, Arisamas. The remaining two qualities, knowledge and jnana and renunciation, are the un, the are the effulgence of the quality of fame because jnana and vairagya are only attributes of a quality uh, and not original qualities in their own right. Thus, jnana and vairagya are actually nirinkar jnana, which is the intrinsic constitutional form of the Nirishish Brahma, and that Brahma is the bodily effulgence of the spiritual world. The changeless, inactive Nirishish Brahma, which exists within without body, limbs and so on, is not in itself a complete tattva. Mm. Um, mm, rather, it depends on the transcendent form of the Bhagavan. Brahma is therefore not a supreme vastu um, that exists in its own right. It is a quality of the vastu. Bhagavan is indeed that vastu and Brahma is his quality. Just as the light of the fire is not a complete and independent tattva, but only a quality that depends on the fire. So Brahma here is telling, uh, Krishna is telling, Brahmano hi pratishtha. Uh, Amritasya vayasya cha, Shashwatasya cha dharmasya, Sikhai kantika sya cha. Mm. Uh, so, um, now Vrishanath is asking the impersonal, nirvishish qualities of Brahma are described in many places in the Vedas. 
at the end of these descriptions, the mantra Om Shanti Shanti Hari Om is always used to describe the Supreme Truth, Shri Hari. Who is this Shri Hari? Babaji, that Shri Hari is in fact Chit Lila Mithun, the combined form of Radha and Krishna who perform divine pastimes. Brajanath, I will inquire into this subject later. Now kindly tell me, how is Paramatma, the creator of the universe, a, part, a partial manifestation of Bhagavan? So, Chillila Mithanam Tattvam, Eka Meva Dityakam, Shakti Shakti Mata Raibhya. So, Bhakti Pargan Kesha Goswami Maharaj also wrote it, Radha Vinadhyaya Rashtakam, Chillila Mithanam Tattvam, Veda Veda Machintyakam, Shakti Shakti Mata Raikyam, Yuga Padvartate Sada. The eternal divine couple are the embodiments of the combined form of Shakti and Shakti Man. To fulfill their transcendental pleasure giving pastimes, they join and become one in the uh, stage of union, Sambhu. And yet simultaneously and inconceivably exist as different and not different form of, uh, different from each other. This means that Paravastu is never without potency, Nishakti. Shakti and Shakti Man are eternally united together in that Paratatva. This Purushottama, the Supreme Male, endowed with completely transcendental past times, the original self in the amorous sport, in the amorous form, the, um, the combined form of Shakti and Shaktiman. That amorous form is Sri Radha Krishna as Gaur Tattva. By the influence of Achinti Shakti, the contrary principles of difference and non differences simultaneously reside in him eternally. Mm. So, um, Sri Vajananda Sri Krishna is the non dual absolute truth, Advai Gyam Paratattva. He is the embodiment of the nectar of all mellows, Akhil Rasamrata Murthy, and he possesses all potencies, Sarva Shakti Man. His natural internal potency is also one and is known as Sarup Shakti. By the desire of Shakti Man, Sri Krishna, the singular potency manifests in various forms to accomplish different tasks. It expands itself in the form of Chit Shakti to manifest the spiritual world, Chit Jagat, as Jiva Shakti to manifest all the living entities, and as Maya Shakti to manifest the entire material creation. This potency also fulfills Sri Krishna's various desires in the form of Samrit, Sandini, and Ladini. Prema is the essence of Ladini, Mahabhava is the essence of Prema, and Shri Radhika is the embodiment of this Mahabhava. That Parashakti, which is the essence of the essence of Prema in the form of Shri Radhika, eternally fulfills all the desires of Sri Krishna, who is the personification of Shringar Rasa. At a time of union, Radha Krishna, Mithuna Tattva, or Yugala Tattva, the amorous couple. That is to say, Sri Krishna, uh, desiring to relish a particular type of rasa, has accepted the ex external bodily luster and the internal Mahabhava of Shri Radhika and is eternally present in the form of Sri Gaurasundar, who is Radha Krishna's combined. Thus, Sri Gaurasundar is also Mithuna Tattva. Swayam Bhagavan Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Sri Aris Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharya has accepted Sri Radha Krishna's simultaneous and inconceivable difference and non difference. This truth has been established in the first verse. So we'll stop here and next uh, time we'll begin from the, it's, uh, the page number 294. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. I appreciate for attending the class and apologize for yesterday's absence. Hare Krishna. Then Dr. Pradam. Any comments or questions, please ask. Otherwise, we can go to Jayadwani. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandharvika, Hare Radha Vinod Vyaji ki Jai Nani Tila Prachadat Guru Shri Shri Bhakti Dantu Narayan Gusai Maharaj ki Jai Tila Prishtam Mishta Paas Shri Shri Bhakti Dantu Vaman Gusai Maharaj ki Jai Tila Prishtam Mishta Paas Shri Shri Bhakti Dantu Trivikram Gusai Maharaj ki Jai Tila Prishtam Mishta Shri Shri Mat Guru Gandh Gusai Maharaj ki Jai Tila Prishtam Mishta Paas Shri Shri Mat Bhakti Dhanda Sai Maharaj Kijay Acharya Keshi Shishimat Bhakti Pragyan Keshi Goswami Maharaj Kijay So Parikar Jagat Guru Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada Thakur Kijay Prem Shri Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrindu Kijay Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopi Gopa Vardhan Dwar Shavanath Makasya Jumandal Kijay Ganga Jamanadun Shri Bhakti Devi Kijay Shri Jagannath Bhada Devi Subhadra Astra Shri Chakra Jiu Kijay Sarva Vigna Vinashan, Bhakti Vigna Vinashan, the Sangre, Bhagavan Gije, Bhakta Proshi, Padlat Maharaj Gije, Charo Sampradai Gije, Charo Achar Gije, Charo Dhamma Gije, Akar Matra, Chaitanya Mat Gije, 
केशव जी गौड़ियों मठ की जय रूप सुनान गौड़ियों मठ की जय गिरधारी गौड़ियों मठ की जय रण बिहारी गौड़ियों मठ की जय श्री रंगनाथ गौड़ी मठ की जय जय श्री दामोदर गौड़ियों मठ की जय श्री बालाजी गौड़ियों मठ की जय अन्य शाखा माँ कमु की जय हरिनाम संकीर्तन की जय अनंदपुरी वैष्णव वृंद की जय त्रेणी स्वामी शिष्य भक्तिदार रंडी महाराज जी की जय नाम निष्ठ संत श्री अनिरुद्धास प्रभु की जय मठेर से वृंद की जय धाम वासी भक्त वृंद की जय समागत भक्त वृंद की जय निता गौर सिद्धना प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि बोल समागत दया कृपा का रक्षा कर गुरु गौर चंद्र राधिका ही तदाल कृष्णाय कृष्ण भक्ताय तद्भक्ताय नमो नम तद्भक्ताय नमो नम तद्भक्ताय नमो नम हरे कृष्ण दंड हरि बोल महाराज and on friday again with shripad bhakti vidanta vishde chamaraj ho shri chitanya charitam lila hari krishna dalavar right, right. thank you so much maharaj hari krishna you were uh, you know that uh, madhur kadambini class we missed yesterday yes. you want to if, if you have any time you can let me know then i can cover that one which we missed sometimes it may happen okay um, tomorrow march is it okay with you wednesday is okay okay all right it took long na mm uh-huh.